never used to get to listen to this word depression much. Um, very, very rarely a word like a psychiatrist or a depression or something. Now that we are all aware of that then, and people know that it's a genuine uh, um, issue and we we'll talk a lot which is very good, I understand completely. But then I also realized there's so much of talk happening. Almost every alternative person, in some conversation we hear this depression word happening a lot nowadays. I'm happy that the awareness has become more, but again at the same time I'm also realizing there are a few people who suddenly might be feeling a little low on a particular day and they want to believe that it is depression. I, I know the depression is a very genuine serious problem, but because of this overexposure, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Is it really pushing the next generation into a, you know, thinking on any small hiccup also thinking that this might be something serious problem and they giving into it. Oh, I didn't know that was a popular question. <laughs> <laughs> With your question, you are getting into trouble. If I answer this, I will get into deeper trouble <laughs> I have already last one year, I have been in lot of trouble because a whole lot of people are pursuing me and saying, he doesn't respect depression, he is talking against it, he thinks it is not a medical no, issue. No, I respect it. By the way, I don't want to be in trouble. But I, gen I genuinely believe it and… but I just don't know, it's… with… with few… It, it's just becoming too much, they are talking so much about it that sometimes, sometimes people who are generally low on particular day also might feel… No, don't be… Ninety percent of the cases are maybe fair, but sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> he really plays it safe <laughs> <laughs> It is not that I am not made like this, that if somebody is suffering, I'll mock them. That's the last thing I'll do in my life. But uh, these days, it's become an activism about everything, not just one aspect. So people are always looking for a cause in their life. Any one word, something, without even understanding what is the context of that one word, simply they'll go on. So let me tell you this. This depression issue came up, I just… it was a quote, a daily quote in which I said, whatever the nature of your ailment, physical, mental, essentially the source is within you. Either your body has turn, turned against you or your intelligence has turned against you. This is a fact. You can give it many names, you can call it stress, anxiety, depression, this, that. Something has turned against you. That is, something within yourself has turned against you. Some outside situations also may prompt you, push you in that direction. But fundamentally, if my intelligence was working for me, I would definitely keep myself in the best of… best possible way. If all the cells in my body were working for me, will I make myself sick? So this is all I said. A campaign ran for about six, eight months, all kinds of people commented, he doesn't know what he's talking, this, this. I have spoken to top-level people in this field across the world. All of them think what I'm saying is perfectly fine. Whether even if I don't get endorsements from them, I know it's perfectly fine because I know how my mind works. I know if I give myself the luxury, I can also become depressed, something doesn't work my way. Nothing actually works my way most of the time <laughs> Yes, I will tell you in more detail if we have time. Because when you do as many things as I do, so many things don't happen the way you want it. The reason why people have reduced their lives to very small scope is simply because they're afraid of failure. I know I will die a failure. But I'm a blissful failure, so it doesn't matter. My… <laughs> you know, in my life, it so happened. Almost thirty-eight years ago, I was sitting in one place, suddenly every cell in my body burst into ecstasy. Then I observed what is happening within me. Then I realized after a few weeks, if I don't mess with my mind, I'll burst with ecstasy. Then I thought, this is it, I have discovered something fantastic. 
On that day, the world's population was 5.6 billion people. Then I sat down and made a plan that in next two and a half years, I will make the entire world ecstatic. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, don't clap at my failures <laughs> Now it is thirty-eight years. <laughs> Ah, uh, we've touched a few million people, people say we have touched some five hundred, six hundred million people, but that's not my idea of the world. Now the population also has increased. I know I will die a failure, but I'm not a depressed failure, I'm a blissful failure <laughs> Now, why I'm saying this to you is, well, there are certain pathological issues within the system. There are genetic issues, there are these chemistry issues. But for all this, fundamentally, the basic control for all this is within you. You have not taken charge of it, that is a clear factor. You are trying to manage an inner situation by arranging an outer situation. But whoever the hell you are, you can never arrange the outer situation just the way you want it. Does it ever happen? Does it ever happen to anybody? Nobody happens hundred percent your way, isn't it? Not your husband, not your wife, not your parents, not your children, not your friends, not your office, nobody happens one hundred percent the way you want it. So if you are going to freak every time, when something doesn't happen the way you want it, then you will freak for the rest of your life. So if you see this, you would understand that the source of all human experience is within you, including how your chemistry will slosh is within you. When somebody is ill, are we going to talk all this to them? No. They need care, they need help, they need medicine, they need compassion, that's a different matter. But those of you who are healthy, if you think, because right from childhood this comes, if you are sick, you get attention, if you are joyful, you will get scolding. This must change in the society. Joy should get attention, <laughs> misery should not get attention. This is a very misunderstood way of handling things. If a child is jumping with joy and screaming, Hi, why are you screaming? If you like this means, mo 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 it's just a wrong way of raising a child because a child must understand he must invest in being well. He must not invest in being unwell. Unwell will not bring any results or rewards to him. He must understand this in a very deep way. If he thinks being unwell physically or mentally, I will get lot of attention and rewards, he will work towards being unwell. This may look very simplistic. But I'm telling you this from a very profound dimension of who we are. There is something called as life energy, as intelligence. Intelligence is not the bone box that you carry. If you… See, does your aukai look like you? Hello? Does it smell like you? Does it feel like you? No. If you mix only I have just chili and mango, and rise and eat it, it goes inside and becomes you, isn't it? There is an intelligence within you which can make this horribly spicy stuff into you. There's an intelligence or no? You eat a banana, it becomes you. When there is such a dimension of intelligence, from all kinds of nonsensical material that you give, it makes a human being. If you have access to this intelligence, your well-being, your health, your mental balance is in your hands or no? If you don't take charge of this, then you are thinking it is all happening to you. So a lot of people for ages, especially in the last hundred years, because of psychiatry developing in a certain way, people started saying, no, there is genetic things, you can't touch it. Well, now genetic sciences are telling you in twenty-four hours, you can change your genetic course completely if you do the right things with yourself. You can change the genetic patterns of who you are in a matter of twenty-four hours. I can show this to you. 
People who go through certain types of initiations and processes, twenty-four hours later you look at them, their very face will look different. You cannot recognize them, they will become like that because you can transcend your genetic limitation. In fact, this entire culture is about that. Spiritual process means that. See, when you are eighteen years of age, you don't want to be like your parents, I want to be something different, this, that. But you see the same person, by the time you're forty, forty-five, you begin to walk like your mother, talk like her, sit like her, stand like her. Have you noticed this happening to you? Because the genetics are taking over. We call this traditionally as karma. Karma means past memory is ruling the present. If memory rules the present, if your memory structures who you are, you have no life of your own, you're just an extension, you're a recycle, you're not a fresh life. Spiritual process means just this, that you want to break away from the limits of your memory because memory means there is evolutionary memory, there is atomic memory, there is elemental memory, there is genetic memory, conscious, unconscious, articulate, inarticulate, there are many kinds of memories. You want to transcend this so that you become a fresh life, your experience of life is completely fresh. Otherwise, you're just a recycle of the past. Why same problems exist after hundred generations is simply because nobody breaks the memory cycle. There is these words which are all misunderstood today. There is something called a samsara. Samsara means, in Tamil it's become samsara means wife. Because she keeps them on the rope and keeps them run around. Samsara means cyclical movement. That is, everything that is physical in the existence is in a cyclical movement. You take an atom, it is doing this. You take the planets, it is doing this. You take the galaxy, it's doing this. You take the whole cosmos, it is doing this. Everything that's physical is in cyclical movement. So if your e entire experience, particularly if your identity is completely rooted in your physicality, you will also be in a cyclical motion. If you want to break this, a dimension beyond physicality has to come into your experience. If you touch something beyond your physical nature, then we are saying this is spiritual. You went to temple, church, mosque, wherever, this is not spiritual. There you are going, what is the prayer about? What is the prayer about? Dear God, give me this, give me that, save me, protect me. Hello? This is just survival, outsourced. <laughs> so if you want to break the cycle, then you have to touch a dimension which is not physical in nature. Once you touch something that is not physical in nature, there is no cyclical moment because you have become free from all the memory bank that you have. So whether you have chemical issues within you, whether you have pathological issues, genetic issues, you can break away from that. Maybe certain people will need more striving, certain people will come out more easily, that is always there. But for everybody there is a way. So when I say all your ailments, if they are infections, they're different. They come from outside, it's an invasion, you have to deal with it. But rest of the things are manufactured within you, this is your cause. Fundamentally, you have to see my physical health, my mental health is my responsibility, one hundred percent. If you see this, then methods are available to come out. We have all the compassion because I want you to understand, if you have a physical ailment, you will get compassion from everybody. If you have a mental ailment, you will get ridicule from everybody. So particularly people who are suffering any kind of mental ailments, depression, anxiety, whatever, they need double the compassion that physical ailments need. But normally in societies, they get ridicule because it is very difficult. It's very difficult to decide whether this person is really sick or making it up or they're acting it up to get something out of me or what it is you can't make out. One time it looks real, another time it looks like it's made up. So, unfortunately, both for the one who is suffering and those who live around them, 
it is a constant struggle. But the most fundamental thing is, whoever you are, whatever condition you are, first and foremost thing to understand is, physical and mental health is my responsibility, hmm? It can go out of hand, it's always there. Whatever you do, we may die, whatever we do, we may become sick, that's a different matter. But it is our responsibility, if you see this, there is a way to touch the very source of creation which is throbbing within you. When the source of creation which made this entire complex body out of Aokai and Chintatokku, <laughs> when it can do this, it can also do some repair job, isn't it? Hello? One who manufactures the whole thing, can't he do some repair job? You have lost access to it. You think for everything there's a solution outside. Yes, when we need help, we will take help. When it, things have gone out of control, we seek help from outside. But fundamental thing is to take responsibility. Today, genetic sciences, neurosciences and also psychiatrists are beginning to speak that whatever the condition, it is possible to alter this from within. Only thing is how. There are many ways for how. Yoga is a technology. Yoga does not mean twisting and turning your body as most people are doing. It is a technology of taking charge of this. One thing is very clear, even if you go to the doctor, they're only giving you a pill, isn't it? What is a pill or a tablet? Just a certain amount of chemicals. If you put these chemicals, it lifts you out of your depression, it makes your anxiety go a little bit. It may not permanently go, at least for those few hours, it's down. So essentially, human experience has a chemical basis. Your joy is a certain kind of chemistry, your misery is a certain kind of chemistry, anxiety is one kind of chemistry, tranquility is another kind of chemistry, ecstasy is one kind of chemistry, agony is another kind of chemistry. All human experience has a chemical basis to it. This is the greatest chemical factory on the planet, most complex and sophisticated chemical factory on the planet. The question is only, are you a great CEO or a lousy CEO? That's all the question is. That may sound brutal when you're sick. When you're sick, there is compassion. But when you're well, you must take responsibility for this. Otherwise, you will make yourself sick. Everybody has an excuse as to why I should not get up from my bed and cry in my bed. Everybody has some reason, isn't it? Hello? Yes or no? Everybody has some pain somewhere about something. Somebody died, somebody did not… If somebody is born, somebody is not born, all kinds of things. There is no human being who doesn't have a reason to push themselves into some kind of mental dip. Everybody has or not, there is a reason. Some people get there, some people don't get there. Is it always intentional? No. But there is an inner intent, that intent may not be a conscious intent, there is a chemical intent, there is genetic intent. Your uh, Atte was depressed, now you don't know why, you are fine and suddenly you're depressed, because there is a genetic intent. But this intent can be altered if you take charge of yourself.